Uh, let's go. Uh, this is a question from Jack. I recently saw an article uh, discussing the optimal ways to develop strength with barbells powerlifting uh, almost dominating the conversation entirely. Uh, yeah, you'll you'll that that's not un, unusual when people say in in our world when you say strength train very often they'll slide right back to just you know basically bench squat deadlift uh, but of course uh, my strength was developed by the Olympic lifts and you can get strong doing all kinds of things. And this is where the question goes on. However, I saw an article sometime after this discussing the strength kettlebells can and often do develop and how it was a different kind of strength. Uh, just, just as a warning, as you get deeper and deeper and deeper into strength and conditioning, all of a sudden all these new definitions start showing up like uh, absolute strength, speed strength, and, and then all these variations and sometimes they'll even put it on a line and i don't like that and then they'll and then then there's another line that people put on and they'll put like endurance here on the one far 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 end and they'll put like you know deadlifting you know uh strength strength on the absolute far end and i just don't think life works that way uh and and it's not a good way to prepare an athlete uh <laughs> if you have an athlete who can only have one short burst, you know, 0.2 seconds. Boom. That's great. Uh, most plays I think in American football last from six to eight seconds. So you, know, you have this athlete go boom, and then nothing happens. Uh, that won't help out. And if you have a, a person who specializes in running, you know, I don't know, a hundred miles a day, uh, they might be in great shape to, in, 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 to compete in an American football game or rugby game the whole time. But the collisions might take, you know, take their toll. So I always worry about making those, uh, you know, those variations a little bit too chopped up. You know, it's, we can move on. Uh, I kind of understand this with reference to the what the heck effect and that using kettlebells will build strength in a different way than powerlifting or barbell work does. But I was curious what your opinion would be on actually building a different kind of strength using exclusively kettlebells, assuming this is what the article meant. Uh, I'm going to finish the sentence and I'll come back and I'll just give you the, the standard answer because I think it's a good answer. I feel the strength is strength no matter how you frame it. See, and I agree with you. So, uh, you know, Jack, we can almost stop right there. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I'm not a big fan of somebody who says you can only get strong doing this or that. You can only get endurance by. Back when running, you know, uh, the, in, in the the cardiovascular word, world was just, you know, just jogging, you know, uh, and they used to call it LSD, long, slow distance, uh, garbage miles, junk miles. And the truth is, you know, you can you can put a lot of time on the pavement running and really not improve a, a lot of qualities um, and, and even get in some trouble sometimes because of those 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 issues with uh, uh, the, the joint inju injuries you can get from uh, a lot of garbage miles. Um, but we'll move on. I feel like strength is strength no matter how you frame it, but there may be an argument to be made for the specific skills that one could transfer better from one modality than the other. So the, the, the advantage of kettlebells uh, is that you can do those high repetition ballistic work that you really, I cannot, I mean, the workout that shall not be named, they do those, you know, they, they for time race up to 30 reps in the clean or whatever they do, or, and then they mix snatches with this or that. I'm not a fan of that. The kettlebell is a great tool for high repetition ballistics. Uh, that would be, you know, like I have the 10,000 swing challenge, which has become popular again because T Nation keeps re reprinting the same article I wrote. <laughs> they don't keep repaying me, but they keep reprinting me. Um, <laughs> yeah, meow, <laughs> saucer, milk, table one, please. But the, the, the 10,000 swing challenge, you know, uh, Pat Flynn has his 300 swings a day for 30 days challenge. Uh, those aren't things you'd want to do with uh, other kinds of equipment. Now, you can, with dumbbells, do things that are similar, but the hinge in the kettlebell is why I think there's so much value to it, where people tend to dead hang 
uh, stuff in the dumbbell more. Um, I, I don't think the barbell is necessarily a high repetition tool outside of the, of the back squat. I think the high rep back squat, and even then you, you, I mean, if you back squat your body weight up, you know, to 50 reps, you're going to be in, in one set. You're pretty much done for the day, at least in my experience. And if, and if you can do 10 sets of 50 with your body weight, uh, in the back squat. So, you know, if you, if you're my size, you know, you put 225 on the barbell cause that's my, my little rule, um, and do 50 reps, <laughs> 10 sets of 50 reps in one day. You know, I, I think that would be, uh, I mean, you know, maybe for a million dollars, I would consider it maybe 10 million. Uh, but the thing that's good about the kettlebell is you got the three ballistics. So the ke high rep kettlebell swing seems to have value for a lot of people. And there's another question about it on today's podcast. The snatch test uh, that you do for the RKC, that's the, the 100 reps in five minutes or what we used to be called the secret service snatch test. That's 100, uh, 200 reps in 10 minutes with the 20, both with a 24K. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's some things you find out about life. I'm always amazed uh, uh, the cardiovascular hit I get like even when I'm demonstrating for a video and I'm only doing three to five snatches and it could be with the 16 or 20 for, a, you know, for a, for a video very often I go lighter because, you know, I'm not, I'm not always warm. I, you know, I want, I don't want to be all sweaty and stuff. So I'm not warmed up, warmed up. So I, I go a little lighter and even after three or five snatches, I'm like, <laughs> and I try to act like I'm not breathing hard, but I am breathing hard. So uh, so, oh, and the third is the clean and actually double kettlebell cleans done correctly can really have a hit. Not, and I, I hate to say cardiovascular, but on, let's just say your whole system. And when you do, if you did a set of say, I don't know, 20, uh, double kettlebell cleans with the, with a decent, decent load and stay tight. You know, you're, you finish here and you, you know, it's, it's swing clean, swing, clean, swing, clean. Uh, you'll, you'll get a very interesting, uh, cardiovascular hit, but also work capacity hit on the other side. So I think there's, uh, I think that is uh, one of the things that makes kettlebell so good on the ballistic side. You can get all kinds of qualities work, especially what I call, well, I call it snapacity. That's when you, uh, you combine snap, which is that explosive movement with work capacity, snapacity for strength. Uh, you're, you're moving load. Uh, it doesn't matter what the load is. The load could be uh, a bed, a couch, a rock, sandbags, kettlebells, dumbbells, barbells. Uh, it can be nothing. It can be a wall. It can be, you know, that doesn't move at all you know, isometric work, the floor, uh, your body weight. Um, there's, there's a, there is a lot of load is load. And that's, I think one of the keys to, to building strength the most obvious thing I've ever said in my life right there. So, and we call those movements in the kettlebell world, the grinds, that would be the press, the, the squat family and the Turkish getup. Uh, those build strength, and I and I don't think you there's any argument about that. I don't know how well I'm I'm answering your question, but just kind of keeping you back in your mind that you know strength you know strength is a skill, and the way we measure how we're doing on imp improving that skill is well at least one of the most obvious ways is an increase in load. Now there's others like increase in reps and, you know, there's some work capacity things that'll show up, but generally the most obvious one is the increase in load. So yeah, I'm a big fan of kettlebells for strength training. Um, you know, there's an exercise called the, the half kneeling press that I think is, is a, a, a tremendous exercise for building strength at the same time uh, working on your, your mobility and your stability, uh, because you have to, you know, you have to hold the pelvis so tight and, and, and the upper body. So, so rigid, um, the double kettlebell front squat, uh, is like a zercher squat without the, the elbow pain. Um, 
I think that is a marvelous exercise for building strength. With American football players and throwers, it's a great exercise because it works the, uh, what I call the anaconda mu muscles, the, that inner tube, you know. So if you did half kneeling presses, double kettlebell front squats, um, I don't know, do, you know, uh, do that for a workout. I think you'd find some amazing, uh, uh, progress in your, in your strength very quickly with very simple tools. Uh, Jack, I hope that helped. I hope I answered your question there. Um, I, I'm a believer that all the tools in the weight room have value, but it's our job to dose it correctly. Okay. To, to give it the right dose of the right amount at the appropriate times. And, uh, there is some science in it. Um, boy. And, but there's a lot of art to it too. Uh, okay. Thank you.